Here we will see what is transaction in SQL Server. A transaction in SQL Server is a sequential group of statements or queries to perform single or multiple tasks in a database. Each transaction may have single read, write, update or delete operations or a combination of all these operations. Each transaction must happen two things in SQL Server. First, either all modification is successful when the transaction is committed or all the modifications are undone when the transaction is rolled back. The main idea of transaction is that when each of the statement returns an error, the entire modifications roll back to provide data integrity. A transaction cannot be successful until all of the operations in the set are completed. That is, if any argument fails, the transaction operation will fail. Each transaction begins with the first executable SQL statement and ends when it finds to commit or roll back either explicitly or implicitly. Now we'll see when to use these transactions. You should use transactions when several operations must be succeed or fail as a unit. Some of the frequent scenarios where use of transaction is recommended are in batch processing where multiple rows must be inserted, updated or deleted as a single unit. Whenever a change to one table requires that other tables be kept consistent. When modifying data in two or more databases concurrently. In distributed transactions where data is manipulated in database on various servers. When you use transactions, you put locks on the data that is pending for permanent change to the database. No other operations can take place on locked data until the acquired lock is released and you should lock anything from a single row up to the entire database. This is called concurrency that is how the database handles multiple updates at one time. Now we'll understand the SQL transactions with an example. When we want to withdraw money from the ATM, the ATM application will achieve this operation in three steps. As a first step, the application will check the balance of the account and then it will deduct the money from the source account. That is first it reads the balance of the account and then update the balance of the account. Along with these two processes, it will keep the log of this money withdrawal activity and if the transaction is success, it will write the ATM data modification to database, else it will roll back the notifications. Then we'll see modes of transaction. First is auto commit transactions. Here each individual statement is a transaction. Explicit transactions. Each transaction is explicitly started with the begin transaction statement and explicitly ended with a commit or rollback statement. Implicit transaction. A new transaction is implicitly started when the prior transaction completes, but each transaction is explicitly completed with a commit or rollback statement. Batch scope transaction. It is applicable only to multiple active result sets. A transact SQL explicit or implicit transaction starts under a MARS that is multiple active result set session becomes a batch scope transaction. A batch scope transaction is not committed or rolled back when a batch complete is automatically rolled back by the server. And different types of transactions are first is implicit transaction. Implicit transactions are maintained by the SQL server for every DDL command that is create, alter, drop and truncate and all the DML that is insert, update, delete statements. All these TSQL statements are run under the implicit transaction. If there is an error occurs within these statements individually, SQL Server will roll back the complete statement. And explicit transaction. Explicit transactions are defined by the programmers. In explicit transactions, we include the DML statement that need to be executed as a unit. Since select statement don't modify the data, hence generally we don't include select statement in the transaction. 